I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be talking about why you just don't care about residency here in Nicaragua, at least. And we're going to get to that because seriously, you don't care. If you care, you've got to be confused. There's no reason that you really have to care about residency. I know you're sure you do, but we're going to talk about it right after the bump. I know residency sounds like the greatest thing ever. That's exactly what everyone wants. And the name residency brings connotations of lots of security and benefits. And it feels like you're fulfilling a need that you have to prove to someone that you're resident in Nicaragua or wherever you're living. But here in Nicaragua, residency doesn't bring a whole lot of benefits. And that's not a bad thing. It's because not being a resident already brings the benefits that people assume come with residency. So because of that, because Nicaragua provides such an amazing non-resident system, it doesn't have the benefits of moving into residency that other places do. Because of this, Nicaragua has a process by which you are a non-resident, spend an amount of time, and Nicaragua themselves, as a government, will inform you should you move into a scenario where they feel you need to become a resident or inform them that you're not planning on staying any longer so the residency doesn't make sense. Either way, they're going to be the triggers, not you, to the residency process, at least if you follow my guidelines and what I believe makes sense. You're always allowed to opt into residency earlier, but it's not designed really to work that way, particularly because uh, the, the system just works a certain way and it makes sense. So the way that it works is when you first come here, you get a tourist visa under normal circumstances, at least. And that allows you to stay, as we said in other episodes, up to 180 days at a shot. And then you do a border run. A border run is very, very easy. It is very cheap, very fast and simple. Even if you're living in really far away places, it is not a big deal. And most people who are staying here in Nicaragua live much closer than the farthest ones to the Costa Rican border. And it makes it so easy. And just, we say this every time, Honduran border doesn't count. It has to be Costa Rica or Mexico. Check your map, you'll want Costa Rica. So it is not a hard process. People who have not been here, who have not done it, or have not figured it out yet and are doing something extra, may tell you that the border run is hard or that they wanna live near the border because of all the border runs. That is senseless. And those are tactics that a lot of people use to try to dissuade you from moving to Nicaragua. They try to make it seem like the incredibly simple, cheap system that exists to make your life as easy as possible is somehow difficult and onerous, even though it's easier than any alternative I've ever heard of anyone proposing. The system is just easy and you can do it indefinitely. And I've talked a bit about this on other episodes, but in case you haven't seen those, things you have to understand about the border run system is that one, it's only every six months. And two, it is only every six months when for no other reason you have exited the country, not including to Honduras, for any particular reason. For the majority, the vast majority of expats who are living in Nicaragua on the tourist visa system, you are going to exit the country naturally at least once a year, possibly more than once. Maybe you're going to visit family in the United States or Canada. Maybe you're going to go to Europe on a vacation. Maybe you want to travel down to Colombia for a medical procedure because it's a wonderful medical tourism destination that is not far away. Flights from the region are just $74. So why wouldn't you go to Colombia for something? But very importantly, all of those those activities negate the need for a border run for another six months. So for a lot of people, including me, you can stay here for years and end up almost never doing border runs. I've been here for three years and I believe I've done three border runs in all that time. And it may be even less. Uh, it's not the kind of thing you track, but at most we do one per year. And most people, it is one per year or less, possibly one every one and a half to two years. Uh, it only comes up when you want to stay in Nicaragua for greater than 180 days without leaving the country for any reason. And it's a small place. So it's a lot like being in a state or a province in the US or Canada and not wanting to go on to a different state or province for six months. It could easily happen, but often it doesn't. Often you're just gonna visit friends somewhere. Oh, you reset. 
You're gonna go for medical. Oh, you reset. You're gonna take a vacation. Oh, you reset. All those things reset your visa. And it doesn't start the clock ticking again until you re-enter. So what if you do go to Europe for a two week vacation? Well, you got an extra two weeks that you also don't have to worry about doing a border run. So not only did you get your 180 days, you also got whatever time period you're away. If you're doing a little bit of a more flexible living situation where you're here for almost six months, but then you're somewhere else for a month, two months, six months, whatever, then you end up never needing to do a border run at all. And in those situations, you generally will never end up needing residency either. If you're in those scenarios, they want to keep you as a tourist indefinitely. And they're happy, they being the government of Nicaragua, are happy to do that. That's a system they've designed. It's as they want it to work. And for you, you should be happy because it's a great system that works incredibly easily and smoothly and cheaply for you. Without being a resident, with just being a tourist, not only is it easy to get here, but you're able to do all the things that people typically associate with residency as well. You can participate in the public healthcare system. In fact, it remains free if you need it, even if you're just a tourist, even if you're a long-term tourist who has been renewing time after time of the doing border runs, you still get free healthcare in the public healthcare system and you have access to private healthcare. You can even get into payment programs and all kinds of things as a tourist. You have access to buy a car. This one's a little bit complicated. You do have to form a corporation in order to do that or have a friend who puts it in their name that is not buying a car, that's someone else buying a car that you pay for. That's a different thing. You can always skirt the rules, right? That's different. But you can actually form a corporation, which is not hard, just to own a car, not hard, and then you can own a car. There are some really minor limitations to that, but they're very minor. Uh, but most people who are doing this, that's what they do, and it's it's completely standard and expected. And again, it's not a loophole, it's as designed. Um, you can uh, buy a house. You can buy a house without ever visiting the country. You can buy land. You can buy on the beach. You can get a rent. You can use the banks. You can, you know, there's basically nothing in the country that you can't do as a tourist that you can do as a resident. Under no circumstances do you get to have a job here. It doesn't matter. Residency doesn't give you that, right? Very importantly, people always say, I want residency because, and then they mention something that either is never available or is already available without being a resident. It is never something tied to residency. I've never once had someone tell me, I wanna get residency so I can have ownership of my car under my own name and be able to do the things that that implies. Because the one thing, one, singular thing that you can do when you have the car under your own name instead of under a corporate name is you can drive it across the Honduran border. It doesn't change anything else, just that one thing. And so with that, like no one has ever said, I really want to drive to Honduras, therefore I want residency. And that is the only thing. So the other thing that people, so, so a bunch of strict rules, none of them apply to residency. And no matter what you're going to say as an example, residency doesn't do it. It doesn't get you on a path to citizenship. It doesn't uh, give you special access to things. It doesn't make your life easier. It doesn't give you more time to do things. Nothing. It doesn't give you some assurance. Nothing. You, you can list as many things as you want down below. I am guaranteeing right now, I've been doing this for three years, every single thing that someone has mentioned that they feel they want residency for does not apply. Either you already have it and they didn't realize, they didn't do any research and didn't know that if they just showed up, they would have that benefit or they don't get that benefit with residency and they just imagined that they would and didn't check that. Those are the only things. I've never met a person who could make an argument as to why they wanted residency except that the government said they had to, and if they didn't, they would have to leave. Therefore, now they want it, which totally makes sense. Many people simply want residency out of an emotional need to have the term residency apply to them. It makes them feel good for some reason. And so without thinking about whether it actually does anything good for them, they just get into this mindset that it's absolutely needed and they, they're passionate about it and they have no idea why. You ask them and they're like, well, but it's residency. And if that's what you have to say, you've admitted in your own brain that you don't actually want residency, you just want something that you can't put your finger on. And that's normal, but it's not residency, not if you really stop and think about it. What a lot of people will try to say is that getting residency makes things easier, but I don't know what those things are. The things that people will point to is they'll try to make border runs sound really hard. Well, there's this really tough border run system, and I don't have to do that anymore. But the border run system is so incredibly easy. It's fast, it's simple, it's cheap, like it's not hard, and you often don't have to do it. There's all kinds of scenarios where you don't have to do a border run every six months, right? It just It's so little effort. It's really hard to describe just how little effort the border runs actually are over the course of your time as a tourist here. 
Then they try to act like being a resident means there's no effort at all, but that is anything but the case. There is actually quite a bit of effort in being a resident, and there's two different ways that you get that effort. One is applying for residency in the first place. For me, applying for residency for one time definitely is more work than every border run I've ever done combined. It also means that you're committing from an investment perspective all that paperwork and time to get your residency. And then if you were to decide not to use it and to leave Nicaragua after that, which I know people who have done it and immediately are like, oh, I may have to leave, not because they don't like it, but because something has happened, family reasons or whatever. And suddenly it's like, I did all that work. I could have just skipped it and stayed a tourist and then just left and never have, never have needed a border run because they just, they were always traveling, all kinds of things. It would have been zero effort, no paperwork needed. All of that investment in the time and the lawyers and the paperwork and they're just waiting in lines, which is not bad, it's not terrible, but all of that, unnecessary. So that's one thing. So, and if you're doing investor residency, which we'll talk about in another episode, it is a tremendous amount of work and it could take you years and it's a huge amount of money. So it's, it's massive, but that does make some things easier, but I don't know that it ever offsets the effort of getting the residency in the first place. And then on the other hand, you have the standard income-based residencies like retirement, and the others, those are much simpler to get. However, you have to reapply every year. Well, you only need to do a maximum under the most extreme circumstances of two border runs per year. So if you're doing two border runs or applying for residency again, which is more work, I'm gonna guess the residency is actually more work. I definitely prefer the border runs. The system is so easy, but it's more than that. That's just the first piece. So every year you're doing this heavier thing rather than two lighter things. But every six months, regardless of your status, it, as a resident, you have to get your cedula reprinted. The cedula is your national ID card. So think of it like your driver's license, more or less. You need to go out and get that renewed every six months. It is super easy, but if you don't live in Managua, it's a little bit of a pain. You have to drive into Managua. So it's a lot like doing a border run, not as much depending on where you live. But if you live right by the Costa Rican border, this is actually more work, not less. So the people who are saying, well, I stay in San Juan del Sur to make things easy, they're not staying. They're just tourists temporarily. As soon as they stop being tourists, it's going to be more work, not less. Uh, you got to go into Managua. you got to go to an office, and you got to have it reprinted. It's not a hard process. It's very fast. But that's a lot of work that you don't need to do as a tourist. Technically, when you become a resident, you're also required to get a driver's license if you're going to drive. This only applies to the drivers out there. Some people don't do it. They're not super strict on checking it, especially right away. But officially, you're supposed to have a Nicaraguan driver's license instead of an American one or a Canadian or whatever. As long as you're a tourist, your North American driver's license is 100% valid and you don't have to worry about anything else. You don't even need an international driver's license, which is just paperwork. Just your regular U.S. or Canadian driver's license and you are good to go. Most Europeans will work to just fine too. So that makes it super easy. If you then have to go and get a driver's license, maintain that, deal with all the paperwork with that. For driving in Nicaragua, that makes the whole process that much harder to be a resident. And pretty much you do have to do it if you're going to be a resident for any amount of time. If you're just a few months, then why did you do it? But if that comes up, you don't need to do it. But if you're going to actually be a resident, you're actually staying here and you're actually driving, you need to go get a Nicaraguan driver's license at that point. So it's pretty clear under normal circumstances, especially once we start considering the average of people only needing to do border runs once every one or two years rather than every six months in the real world, that having residency actually carries quite a noticeable negative compared to being a tourist. While I do want to be able to drive over the Honduran border, I have no desire to actually be a resident. It just makes things harder. There's no benefits to it. That's the sad truth that it's actually the perfect time to be in Nicaragua is that is that honeymoon period between when you first arrive and when you finally receive your residency. Everything in between is the best. It's still wonderful once you have your residency, but it's not quite as good. It's just, it's 99%, but it gets just a little bit worse. So when people are pushing that you got to get residency, you really should stop and be like, well, why would they think this? They have to be fundamentally confused about what residency means, what it gives them, or what they already have. And it should also make you question what they're approaching as thought processes for their relocation decisions. How are they making their decisions? Probably they're making them very emotionally and not actually taking the time to ensure that the things that they're reacting to are actual facts and just 
things they imagined or hearsay, uh, which can be very difficult. How do you find out about these things? That's why we're making shows like this to make sure this information is out there, but it's really important. So the bottom line, you don't want residency. You don't want to avoid it, but you don't want to seek it out. It is not your goal. Your goal to stay here has nothing to do with residency. If you could stay here forever without residency, you'd prefer it. We all would. So don't spend your time wondering how you can get residency. Spend your time wondering why you haven't gotten on a plane and come down here already, because all of the benefits you're imagining with residency could be yours later this afternoon as soon as you like and subscribe, share on social media, buy me a coffee for saving you so much work. In fact, maybe a few coffees, because I just gave you a lot of really important information that you needed. You could help me out, because I don't make anything from the YouTube. You know, stuff like that pays nothing, but your coffees make a huge difference. So if you would, you know, consider hopping over to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. A few coffees could go a really long way to helping keep this show on the air and make this all possible. But I really appreciate everyone who's watched this far do all the things, hang out, and I will see all of you tomorrow, hopefully here in Nicaragua. And as you hang out here in the few minutes after I stop talking, some videos pop up on the screen. This is a great opportunity for you to pick one of those from like a year ago, two years ago, and go see how our trip to Nicaragua was over the past couple of years. Every time you view an episode after we just created one, it tells YouTube that you really love the show. <laughs>